been test cutting eight millimeter carbon steel and it's cutting it out, but I'm not getting the greatest results yet. It's kind of leaving a pretty irregular edge finish. Some, some sides of it look pretty good and then it, next to it, it'll look uh, pretty nasty. Um, I'm wondering if maybe it's, uh, I switched out this uh, electro pneumatic regulator for a manual one. And I'm wondering if it's just not keeping uh, regular air pressure with the oxygen. So some more testing's in order for sure. Let me just take a look here. Yeah, they're obviously all 20 centimeters. Welcome back to the fifth video in my fiber laser cutter build series. In this video, we're gonna be hooking up the cooling system and the gas assist system. Uh, if you haven't seen my previous videos, go back and check them out to catch you up to speed. All right, let's go. I'm going to be sharing some of my experiences with you, but please understand I'm a complete novice on this subject. Lasers can be very dangerous, so if you choose to operate one, please understand the safety risks and do your own research and uh, please be safe. First, I got some tubing to install for the cooling line for the laser head. I use a tube cutter to cut it in half for the feed and return lines. Then I can run the lines through the X drag chain and down through the Y drag chain. Before going any further, I need to consider the routing of the laser optical cable. It has a minimum bend radius of 30 centimeters, so I'm not gonna be able to run it through my drag chain. I come up with a plan to use the spring steel from a fish tape and cut it down and route the cable over the top of the machine. I have enough spring steel, so I make it four layers thick. That feels like a good amount of spring and flex. So I zip tie the four layers together. And a quick snip, snip, snip. Then I need to remove the laser head once again so I can install the optical cable on a horizontal surface. Apparently this is to help prevent dust contamination. I can now reinstall the laser head while being careful not to kink the optical cable. Then I lightly zip tie the optical cable to the spring steel. And more snip snip snip. I give it a quick test drive and make sure the cable can reach all four corners without any tension. And it looks good, so back to the tubing. The cooling line first runs through the QBH connector. Then it runs out and down to the first connection point on the laser head. It appears to first cool the collimating lens, and then it exits and drops down and cools the focusing lens. And then it exits the laser head and returns back to the water chiller. And here's a complete look of the finished cooling line for the laser head. Next, I need to run the hoses to cool the laser source. The water chiller has separate lines to cool both the laser head and the laser source. It came with some short tubes and some couplers, but then I had to separately buy the proper diameter I needed to run to both the laser source and the laser head. So I bought the proper size tubing and a few more connectors to hook it all up. I prepared these parts to install on the laser source. The tubes are pretty rigid, so I use a heat gun to soften them a little bit so they'll slip on easy to the connectors. Then I can tighten down the clamp. I heat and install the tube on the other side the same way. And here's what I have so far. I'm not crazy about the design of putting the water line right above the power line, so hopefully there's no leaks. Now I can plug in the two longer tubes to the couplers. Okay, everything's connected on the machine side. Now I just need to route it around and hook it all up to the water chiller. I tried to group all the water tubes together so there's just going to be one single run over to the water chiller. I get all of the push fittings installed and then plug in the short tubes with reducers. I wrap all the tubing in this protective sheath and then get them all plugged into the back of the water chiller. And here's what I have, one nice clean run to the water chiller. Now I can fill up the water chiller with one gallon of antifreeze and four gallons of distilled water. It's all full of coolant, so now I can power it on and run the first test of the system. While it's running, I go around and check every connection point and make sure there's nothing leaking. And it all feels dry. Awesome. I buy some aluminum U-channel that I want to lay out something like this for the cutting bed. I get them all measured out and cut down to length. I model up a rail spacer in Fusion 360. Then 3D print the parts, and here's what they look like. I drill pilot holes and then get them all screwed in. And here's how it turned out. It's pretty easy to move the rails around as needed, 
and the rail spacers uh, work nice to keep everything aligned and secure. I'm kind of bouncing around here as different parts arrive, but I got the flexible duct for the exhaust system, so I'm going to go ahead and get that attached. Then I got the tube for the air assist, so I need to go ahead and run that through the drag change to get it up to the laser head. Then I can go ahead and get it attached to the laser head. And here's what we have so far. I think I'm finally done running all the tubing and we're ready to move on. I was also working on retrofitting the CNC mill with a new controller and building an enclosure the same time as the laser. So I decided to use the extra aluminum extrusion to uh, extend the wall up a little bit to help contain the sparks. I used my CO2 laser cutter to cut out some MDF panels to use as the sidewalls. I cut out four wall panels and another panel to go above the electronics. I dry fit them to make sure they're the right size. I traced the perimeters of the panels and then cut out some sheet metal to laminate to them to protect against sparks just like uh, the wall panels before. I drill out the holes. The edges are going to be exposed on this particular panel so I wrap them in aluminum tape. And here's what that panel looks like installed. Here are the other four wall panels. I go ahead and get them all traced and cut out the sheet metal and get them all installed. And here's what that looks like. It does a pretty good job of containing the sparks, but ultimately I ended up uh, building a full enclosure to help uh, contain the fumes also. The parts have come in so I can finally start building the gas assist system. I should have done a little more research before buying all these components because finding all of the correct fittings for all of these turned out to be quite complex. I was dealing with different port sizes and different thread types from both Europe and the US and ended up having to buy uh, way more fittings than should have been needed for this project. I was also taking into consideration the price of the fittings. Sometimes I could use a couple uh, for way cheaper than buying the exact part I needed. And here it is assembled. The oxygen low pressure line is on the top and then on the bottom is the high pressure side for nitrogen or compressed air. So I think I want to mount it here somewhere on the back of the machine. So I need to install a couple more pieces of extrusion to mount it to. I get it attached with some drop-in T-nuts. And here it is installed. Off camera, I go ahead and wire in the two solenoids to the controller. I start by testing the high pressure side by turning on and off the gas with the handheld controller. Then I move my compressed air line to the low pressure side and test that one. Now I'm ready to hook up the gases. I have a 300 cubic feet tank of nitrogen and oxygen. Ultra high purity gases are really expensive so next time I'm going to get industrial grade. I remove the safety covers and I install hoses on both of the regulators. I install the regulators on the tanks. Then I unwind the hoses and get them plugged in. I have this cheap air compressor that I also want to test. It has enough pressure but low capacity which is enough for about 40 seconds of cut time. The compressed air needs to be dry and filtered, so I install a multi-stage filter with a desiccant dryer. Then I get all the connection fittings installed. Then I can add the desiccant beads to the dryer. I add a drain line and then that part's ready to go. When I want to use compressed air, I'll just unplug the nitrogen hose and then connect my green hose from the water filter down to the high pressure input. Before the compressed air runs into the multi-stage filter, it also goes through a pre-filter and a refrigerated air dryer. And we're almost ready for cutting. Here's a look at the complete air assist system. I can now use oxygen, nitrogen, or compressed air. There was a lot of parts involved in this system, so I'm going to be putting the complete diagram with all the components and fittings and routing uh, on my Patreon page. Thanks for watching! This video was starting to get a little long, so I think I'm going to wrap up the build next video with finishing out the enclosure and a few updates. Um, thanks to all my Patreon members for making this project possible. Thanks guys.